Okay, in this section we're going to talk about hyperbolas. The definition of hyperbola is, is exactly like an ellipse except for one word. We use the word difference instead of sum. So a point P lies on the hyperbola if D1 is the distance from P to one focus and D2 is the distance to the other then the absolute value of D1 minus D2 has to be some constant K. And we use that uh, definition to derive the equations. There's two major types. Let's, let's first of all assume that, that the foci are along the x-axis. And, and in every problem in this section, we're going to assume also that the center is the origin, 0, 0. Okay? So, and if that's the case, then the equation for the, uh, whoops, then the equation for the hyperbola looks like this. The, the significance is that you have one on one side, you have a minus sign, that's what, that's what, distinguishes it from an ellipse, and most importantly, whichever term is positive, that tells you which axis the foci are on. And the, whatever is below the, that term, in this case a squared, that'll tell you what the vertices are. The vertices uh, are these two points here and here, and then the transverse axis is the distance between them. We'll talk about the asymptotes in just a second, but the, um, the uh, foci will be plus or minus c0, and this is a very important equation. This, this equation here tells you the relationship between the coordinates of the uh, coordinates of the foci and the coordinates of the vertices in B that we'll talk about in just a minute. Anyway, so let's talk about the asymptotes. Think of that as the end behavior, okay, the end behavior. What happens to y as x gets uh, very big? And what we're going to do here is we're going to solve the equation for the hyperbola for y, and then we're going to look at what happens as x gets big. How about that? So let's start off by saying y squared, whoops, I didn't want that. Let's say um, y squared over, over uh, b squared is equal to x squared over a squared minus 1. Let's multiply both sides by b squared. y squared equals b squared x squared over a squared minus b, right? And then we can write that, we can factor out the b squared x squared over a squared from each term. It turns out you get 1 minus, this is a b squared, 1 minus, uh, let's see, we get a squared over x squared, I believe. If you don't believe it, go ahead and multiply it back through. You'll see that it's, it's true. So then uh, when we take the square root, uh, the square root of this becomes uh, bx over a, and the square root of everything else just becomes 1 minus a squared over x squared. So what happens as x gets large? Well, it's not too hard to see. This term right here goes to 0, because the top is constant, and the bottom, when you square it, it's getting big. So big number on the denominator, the whole thing goes to 0. So this, this graph, the y-coordinate, gets close to plus or minus b over ax. Here's a nice way to remember that, by the way. If you go back to the original equation here, and in your mind, if you just try to solve that equation for y squared, isn't one term going to be b squared x squared over a squared? When you solve this for y squared, you're going to have a b squared x squared over a squared. So when you take the square root, you get bx over a. In other words, try to re remember how we, how we got it. Anyway, let's, let's look at some examples. Okay, before we can do this first one, we have to write it in the right form, we have to get 1 on one side. So we're going to take this equation here, 9x squared minus 4y squared equals 36. We're going to divide everything by 36. So get 1 on one side. you got to have that. Same is true with ellipses, right? Anyway, so I get, um, I get uh, x squared over 4 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. This is the equation for the hyperbola. And, and since x squared is a positive term, we know that uh, the, the foci are on the x-axis, right? In fact, you can, see, you can tell me what a is. a squared is 4, so a equals 2, um, b equals 3, and uh, 3, I, I meant to say, uh, so then c squared equals a squared plus b squared, which is going to be um, 4 plus 9, so c equals square root of uh, 13, right? 
Anyway, so let's see, what are the foci? The foci then would then be uh, uh, we're on the horizontal axis, so plus or minus radical 13, 0. What are the vertices? The vertices would be plus or minus 2, 0. And what are the equation of the asymptotes? Remember, it's plus or minus b over ax, so plus or minus 3 halves x. Okay, now when it comes to graphing, it's kind of nice to draw the asymptotes first. Uh, that way you can make your graph look uh, asymptotic to that. And we're going to draw this little box. If A is 2 and B is 3, let's mark that off. This is 2, this is 3. So the graph. if you draw this little box here, it does help you graph the asymptotes. That's all it is, because the slope is 3 halves, right? So draw a line that goes to the origin and has slope 3 halves, like this. Just a, just a just an aid to help you graph it, right? And then, uh, start at the vertices. Here's a vertex here, right? And try to make your graph look like it's asymptotic to these asymptotes. Let, let's actually label the label the equations, too. This one is, um, the asymptote is y equals 3 halves x. y equals negative 3 halves x. That's not that bad, is it? Okay, in this next problem, notice you got y, oh, uh, you got 1 on, on the right side, which is good, but on the left side, you have to write it in the right form. You're going to have to write it like this. You're going to have to write it as x squared over 1 fourth minus y squared over 1 equals 1. So that means that a squared is 1 fourth, so a is 1 half, b is 1, and the way you find c, remember c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So that says that c squared is 1 fourth plus 1, which is 5 fourths. So c would be radical plus or minus, no, not, not plus or minus. Uh, c is um, radical 5 over 2. C is positive. Alright, so what does that say? That says that the, the foci are going to be at plus or minus radical 5 over 2, 0. It says the vertices are going to be at uh, plus or minus one half zero, right? And the equations of the asymptotes are going to be at um, y equals plus or minus b over a. So one over one half, isn't that two? All right, so when we go to graph this, um, let's see, since a and b are so small, why don't I just make them a little... I'll make every tick mark two units. Or I meant every tick mark is one half units. So this this would be one half, and this would be one. So my box that we're talking about looks kind of like this. I'm going to plot these points. Um, so when you draw this, uh, these asymptotes, it looks like this. This is one. The other one looks like this. And then we start at the vertex, which is at one half zero, and then we'll try to make try to make it look asymptotic to the asymptotes. Start at the vertex, make it asymptotic to the asymptotes. Uh, let's let's label these two. This would be y equals two x. This is y equals negative two x. That's not too bad, is it? Okay. Now, when the foci are along the y-axis, things change a bit. The equation's different because now, since the foci are along the vertical axis, it's the y squared term that's positive. And remember, a squared is always below the positive term. Okay. Uh, and another thing that's different is the, uh, the asymptotes. Instead of plus or minus b over ax, you're going to have a over bx. Everything else is the same, though. Okay. Now, let's talk about that. Why do you get a over bx instead of b over ax? Well, when you go to... Uh, when you, when you take this equation here, and you remember how, how, you, how, you, how you get the, um, the asymptotes, you're looking at the end behavior, right? You try to solve this for y. So you get y squared over a squared equals x squared over b squared plus 1. When you multiply by a squared, you get y squared equals a squared x squared over b squared plus a squared. Can you see it right now? You can kind of see that when you take a square root, you see this this term here? 
And when you take the square root, basically, you're going to have something that looks like a over bx. So that's what I'm saying. If you can kind of see where, how it goes, it can save you some work. Anyway, you can also keep it straight. I'm going to factor out the a squared x squared over b squared from both terms. And you end up with 1 plus, let's see, what does this become? b squared over x squared, I think. Go ahead and check me on that, make sure I'm right. So anyway, when you take the square root then, like I was saying, when you take the square root of that first term, you're going to get plus or minus a over bx, right? And this other term is just going to be 1 plus b squared over x squared. And, and um, as x gets big, this term goes to 0. So that square root just goes to 1. So this whole thing is going to get close to plus or minus a over bx. All right, let's look at some examples of that type now. Okay, so in this problem, you've got to get 1 on the right side. So let's divide everything by 8. Let's take this equation, 2y squared minus x squared equals 8. Let's divide everything by 8, okay? So the equation becomes y squared over 4 uh, minus x squared over 8 equals 1. All right, so now since the y squared term is a positive one, that means our foci are going to be along the y-axis, right? And so a, a turns out to be, a squared is 4, so a is 2. b squared is 8, so b is the square root of 8, which is 2 radical 2. Remember the way we find c? c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So um, c squared equals 4 plus 8, which is 12. So c is the square root of 12, which equals 2 radical 3. All right, so putting that all together, remember we're on the vertical axis now. The foci are going to be at plus or minus c, so 0, comma, plus or minus 2 radical 3. The uh, vertices are going to be along the y-axis at um, 0, plus or minus 2. Now remember the equation of the asymptotes? Um, it's plus or minus a over bx, not plus or, plus or minus b. So a over b becomes uh, 2 over 2 radical 2. Isn't it basically plus or minus 1 over radical 2x? So let's put it all together. Let's plot the, the box. Remember, the box helps you graph the asymptotes. That's all. It's just a device to help you graph the asymptote. Let's see. A is 2. Unfortunately, b is... Uh, B is uh, 2 square root of 2, which is about, what is that, 2 times 1.4, isn't it about 2.8? It's a little bit less, less than 3, isn't it? Anyway, um, so let, let's just approximate that, okay? So if A is 2, that means you're going to go here and here, and B is almost 3, so it's right about here and there. Whoops, I messed up. Um, I should say here almost. The box looks kind of like this. So when you plot this, it's going to look kind of like this. This is approximate. This is, and this one looks kind of like this. So this would be y equals 1 over square root of 2x. This is y equals negative 1 over square root of 2x. And so to plot the um, hyperbola, you start at the vertex, try to make it look asymptotic to the asymptotes, and the other vertex would look like this. Not too bad. Okay, only got a few seconds left, so why don't you hit the pause button, see if you can find the equation of the hyperbola, if I give you the foci and the vertices. Go ahead, hit the pause button. Okay, well you notice that uh, the foci are going to be on the y-axis, so C is 4, A is 2. To find B, all you have to do is, is use the equation C squared equals A squared plus B squared. You solve that for B, you get B. B squared is 12, so you're done. The equation's right here. It didn't ask you to graph it. But anyway, you, you could graph it. It looks like this. Anyway, I gotta go. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.